Hey guys, this is Evan from Race Tech Electric. Um, I'm going to show you real quick how to change the stator on a uh, KTM um, uh, LC4 motor. So this is a 96 EXC400, but all these motors are the same, uh, that uses the um, SEM ignition. You can see it says right there. Um, the SEM stator it looks like this. It's got a plastic covering on it. It's... Um, pretty different from a lot of the other stators that KTM used. Um, the whole ignition system on this bike is the SEM stator here and then <clears throat> the coil which you can see right here. The, there is no separate CDI box or timing or ignition box. Um, the timing map and um, all the timing stuff is uh, part of the coil. So uh, this particular bike had the stator fail, which is very common on these after they're about 10 years old or so. The SEM stators um, fail quite a bit on these motors. Um, they're really simple to change though, so um, I kind of didn't think about this to film it up front so I already have this partially disassembled but I'll explain it it's really simple you want to pop off the skid plate if you have one um, because it covers one of the mounting bolts for the uh, for the stator cover um, so just undo the skid plate pop it off no big deal um, the stator cover is mounted like that um, you have four mounting bolts which are um, I think they are five millimeter uh, Allen heads. Uh, these should be the stock bolts. So they're five millimeter Allens. I've got them up uh, underneath the bike now, but anyways, um, you'll see the little ears on the cover. This guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So there's four of them that hold the cover in place like that and you want to uh, undo all four of those and then you'll be able to pop the cover off, okay? You'll have the stator wires uh, run through this gap here behind the oil uh, lines and they're kind of wedged up through. They end up plugging in up here on the other side of the bike to the coil. So you want to go ahead and unplug those. Most of these bikes, if it had lights, will have two separate connectors. Basically they'll have the, uh, the three wires that are for the ignition system, the green, red, and black bullet connectors. So you want to unplug those. And then um, on a bike that had lights, you'll have your, uh, your lighting connector, which looks like this. I think there's some other versions of this. You might have three wires. If it had a battery, it probably had a three-phase connection. So there might be different plug here for the charging setup. That's usually plugged in back here on the side of the bike. This bike's got a custom dual sport kit on it, so it's probably not going to line up exactly with a uh, with a completely stock bike. So anyways, you want to trace the stator um, wiring harness and unplug the connectors. So once you have them loose, and then you undo the stator housing, kind of pop it off from the flywheel. There's no oil, it's a dry cover on this side so you don't need to worry about draining the oil or anything. Once you pop that off, kind of pull the, gently pull the wires back through. You might, I had to undo the uh, oil uh, bolt, or the bolt here, the banjo bolt at the oil filter so I could move these lines out of the way. But anyways, do whatever you need to so you can pull these gently through and then go ahead and just pop the cover off. So now that you have it off, we'll go ahead and swap the stator. Oh, I also removed, I don't know that you absolutely have to, but I removed the chain guard here. Um, so I had easier access to the oil filter bolt. Um, that's just two uh, five millimeter Allen bolts as well. Okay, so now that we have the stator, um, the cover and the stator on the workbench, you wanna go ahead and remove the old one. Um, I've already loosened these. Um, I think these are the stock um, uh, screws that hold it down and they're just uh, flatheads. So anyways, you wanna undo all those guys and remove them. So once that's done, um, I'll have to put the camera down, but you'll just kind of wiggle this around. It's a press fit, so it's a little tight. Wiggle it around and pop the stator out, and then I'm going to show you how to install the new one. There's also a wire clamp uh, here. It's a Phillips head bolt, and um, it's right below the, uh, the grommet, and that clamps the wire down here out of the way. So you need to remove that. Once that's out of the way, um, this stator was the original and hadn't been removed, so it was a real tight fit. So what I did was unscrewed uh, the timing cap, which is a little flat head plug here. So I unscrewed that, and then I was able to see the bottom of the stator at the timing mark, which is this guy right here. So I just used a, um, 
uh, wood dowel that I could slip through the cover and then tap it with a hammer and that just popped the stator loose out of its uh, press fit. So now that the stator's out, we're ready to install the new one. Um, I have a new stator here from Electrex World. Um, they're the only ones I've been able to find that makes brand new ones. I do not make uh, stators for this bike. So here I have my replacement stator. It looks different, but it's functionally the same. Um, so very simple installation. You want to just make sure you clock it correctly so the wires are exiting along where they were before. And you want to drop the stator down on its pedestal and line up the mounting holes. And then you want to make sure that you use uh, red Loctite on your mounting bolts because you don't want to ever risk this coming loose. So use some red Loctite and reinstall your bolts, tighten them up, and then you're ready to put it back on. Okay, so I've reinstalled the new stator. Um, couple things to point out so number one make sure you use a uh, red Loctite or thread locker when you're installing these um, on uh, the wire clamp Phillips head down there and all the three of the uh, flathead mounting bolts you want to make sure those never come loose um, so a couple things to note if you're installing an Electrex uh, stator which are the only aftermarket ones I've been able to find for these bikes um, you need to reuse the grommet, the rubber grommet right here. Um, they say to cut it with a knife and then use super glue to seal it up again. Um, this old stator is dead, so I, I cut some of the sleeving off. There's a big chunk of sleeving here. So I was able to just slide the grommet all the way up the wires and uh, I depinned the connector there and I was able to just slide it off. Um, so do whatever you need to to get it off there but you want to keep it in good shape. I got it off without cutting it so it won't leak at all. And then I just fed the wires through it one by one uh, and I was able to get them on and slide it back down. So now that I did that um, you need to uh, take your time lining it up and make sure you get it uh, the stator lined up correctly. There's a couple different ways it'll fit and the spacing is actually different between the three mounting bolts so you want to make sure you get it lined up correctly. Um, and then make sure you route the wire cleanly uh, on the bottom and then the clamp holds it down so that way the flywheel can't hit it. Um, other than that, you know, use some uh, Loctite, make sure all three mounting bolts are very tight and the grommets lined up correctly and if you removed the uh, timing cover right there make sure you reinstall it. Okay so I went ahead and uh, reinstalled the stator cover um, so one thing uh, I did was I removed the banjo bolt for the oil lines again um, the wiring harness for the stator right here does need to go underneath it so you need to remove that bolt there so that way you're able to lift the lines up and then route your wires underneath and they go up here underneath the exhaust and I'll show you on the other side in a minute they go underneath the uh, I believe that's another oil filter housing on these guys and it comes up through a clamp off of the cam chain tensioner so I'll show you the other side in a minute after you route that um, just line up the cover the flywheel will suck it back into place and get all your bolts threaded and go ahead and put your uh, oil line uh, banjo bolt back in and so I'm gonna get all these tightened up and then I'll show you the connections on the other side. Okay so I finished running my wires uh, my stator uh, wiring harness came through the bottom here up through this clamp I'm not sure if this is stock or not so if you have one use it this might have been added but anyways uh, my wires gonna run up along the frame here I went ahead and made my ignition connections they're color coded so no big deal there and there's different ways to hook up this stator because it can be used on many different models, some that charged a battery, some that didn't. Um, this bike was uh, converted to charge a battery with a single phase setup, so I may actually go ahead and do a uh, three phase uh, regulator on here and charge the battery a little better than it was before. But anyways, you can figure that part out for uh, your particular setup. Um, put your skid plate on and get your bike back together. So I hope this helps. Um, this is uh, a pretty uh, decent overview of uh, how to swap the SEM stator on a KTM LC4 motor. So hope this helps. Check out uh, Racetech Electric, www.racetechelectric.com. Uh, give us a call, 760-476-3514, or shoot us an email at uh, contact at racetechelectric.com. Um, also, check out motorbikemondays.com, a motorcycle podcast that I do. 
uh, with a couple local guys uh, that build custom bikes. Uh, we'll post this video over there at Motorbike Mondays as well. And uh, if you're into bikes, check it out.